a hybrid between a sponge filter and a moving bed filter? Want to learn how to make it? Stay tuned. Whoa, what's going on guys? Forrest here, Shiklam Alright. Got a cough drop in my mouth. Throat's feeling a little, a little miffy. But today, we're gonna mix it up here with the DIY action, and we are gonna do a DIY full how-to on our awesome, fantastic super filter I like to call the moving bed sponge filter with K1 and a sponge and a tile and some PVC piece filter. Now I could go like I've tried to do with other videos. By the way, I need a drink of water. That's good stuff. Okay. Now, I could try and go super in-depth and try and do a fancy video about how to make this, but this is not a fancy filter, so we do not need a fancy video. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a DIY full how-to vlog on how to make this filter. Show you guys real quick, because honestly, I've tried to make that video a few times. And to say that it's impossible is borderline. No, it's basically true. Uh, it's just, it's just tough. Uh, it takes, takes a lot of time. And um, I feel like this way will be more fun, and we'll have a good time. Fish are doing fantastic. Azul and everybody is doing great. Got my mustache is ready to go because I know this one's not going to last. Um, Hulk's over here. He's in the spotlight. It is time to show you guys how to make our DIY fantastic amazing super filter it's a hybrid now in the tank right here we have some going got a moving bed chamber right there we've got an area called the sponge filter that's basically it thanks for watching guys we'll see you next time just kidding okay now let's actually show you guys how to do it we're gonna go to the miniature table of do-it-yourselfness we're just gonna sit down on the floor like a cool kid. What's up guys? So, what we're gonna need for this awesome filter, tube of silicone, boom. 100% silicone, aquarium safe. That's the kind of stuff that you wanna see on there. No additives, no bull crap. Silicone. Some sort of a sponge, right there. The XY sponges, you can get them on eBay. The Xbox XY 180, that's that one. The one up there in that tank, that would be the XY380. It's a much taller filter, or a taller sponge, shall we say. Um, same, di same diameter though, so whatever. Uh, okay, next thing we're gonna need is a two liter bottle. Boom, like that, this one's already full of K1, cause uh, here. There's an empty one for you. Two liter bottle with lid. I have seemed to have misplaced the lid, whatever. So. Two liter bottle, you can get them at your local grocery stores. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a two liter bottle before, but if you haven't, right there, that's what it looks like. Two liter bottle, make sure you don't lose the lid. I've already misplaced the lid for that one, so 10 points for me. All right, next things we're gonna need are two PVC pieces. You got this one right here. This is a threaded plug. We're gonna sit down in the chair. Got ourselves a threaded plug right here. We got threads on the outside. And what we've done is we've taken our drill bit because you do need a drill, 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 drill. Bzz. Need one of those with a drill bit about that size because we're going to drill a hole in the middle of that. And I'll explain why here in a second. Then we got this piece right here. We got the threads on the inside for the reason being that this fits into there and then screws in. Blabbity bloop. Blah, 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 blah. So that fits in there and around this one we've got some holes drilled all around the base of this. This piece right here is going to be the base like that, going to look like that. So do we need anything else for the filter other than some K1? K1 calmness this is what the stuff looks like. Fantastic moving bed filter media. I'm not going to go in depth explain how a moving bed filter works instead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to link to a video right there. I'm going to link to a video right there. And that's going to show you by going to a couple channels 
called The King of DIY and Mr. Pond Guru, Richard over at Time Valley Aquatics. This is Richard from Time Valley Aquatics. Um, love you guys. Those guys are going to understand a lot better exactly why moving bed does what it does, why it's so efficient. So in those two videos in that region, in that region go watch those. Come back to this one. And uh, hopefully you'll learn something about moving bed, or you can wait till the end. Whatever, I'll put the links in the description as well. So go check that out. So uh, K1 Calledness, where do you get it? How much do you get? This filter, utilizing a two-liter bottle, requires one liter of K1. Simple math: two liter, one liter equals seven. So yeah, simple math: seven liters. Hold on a second. One liter of media. Uh, go on eBay, check them out on eBay, eBay EY, eBay EB. Been a long day. Check them out, eBay. Uh, you can get a liter all by itself, shipped to your door, about six bucks. Not the cheapest media, not the most expensive stuff. You know, this filter, the K1 required for this filter, gonna cost you about six bucks if you buy it by itself. If you buy in more, buy more of it at a time, it costs you a little bit less money per liter. So. More, but more you buy, cheaper per liter. All right, good, got it, good. All right, so got our K1, got our PVC pieces. First step here is to take our silicone and our pre-drilled PVC base here, and to silicone those together. So we're just gonna doodly doodly do. All right, and it's done. Now. Next step is to take our threaded plug thingy here. Take our cap from the bottle, which would usually look like that. And what we're going to do with it, since I'm just kind of going by my seat of my pants, which makes no sense. Because usually, wherever I go, I'm going with my feet, or a car, or a bicycle. Okay, so you're going to take that threaded plug and the cap to the bottle. You're going to take your beautiful silicone, you're going to take that and doodly doodly do, and you're going to silicone those two together. Both of these need to have holes drilled in them for water flow. Water flow! Okay. Those two pieces are silicone. Those are the only two things that you're going to require the silicone for. Now, when you're siliconing things for aquarium use, what do you got to do? You got to put it in your bathtub for three days, water on medium, medium lukewarm. Wait a second. No, not that. That was a different thing. I don't know what the heck I was thinking of. When you're using silicone for aquarium use, what you got to do is you got to glue it, clean it up, make it look all purdy. But you got to wait 12, 24 hours. Wait a day. I'm just going to say it. Wait a day. Um, let the silicone cure because if you don't let it cure, it's just going to fall apart. And the silicone, when not cured, if that goes in your water column, can actually poison your fish, cause some harm. So just wait a day. Wait till the silicone's fully cured, and you're gonna be good to go. Good to go. Okay. So got those two things siliconed. That's basically it. Other than drilling holes and siliconing a couple pieces, this is basically the easiest filter you've ever made in your entire life. But one of the most efficient filters you've ever seen in the history of mankind. Right? Check out this fish over here, by the way. I know I'm talking about how to make a filter, but this fish is beautiful. Alrighty. So. That was itchy. So, we're going to discuss exactly... Okay. So, got our thing silicone. We waited a day. Everything's good to go. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take... Our completed pieces, this, that, our bottle in the bottle. Where's the where's the uh, where's the other one? I lost it. I lost it. Empty bottle. We're gonna show you exactly what holes you need to drill in this. In the bottom legs of the bottle. Bottom legs of the bottle, 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 bottom legs of the bottle. bottle, 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 bottle. We're gonna drill a hole in each one of those. <sighs> beautiful. They don't have to be perfect, they don't have to be beautiful. Mine look like crap, get over it. In the side of the bottle right here, that little guy, about, I don't know, midway down the angular portion of the, uh, the angular portion of the neck of the bottle, we're gonna drill a hole right there about the same size as your airline tubing. Possibly slightly smaller would be nice so that it fits in there nice and snug. 
And if you're using the XY380 sponges, like these ones, you're gonna be drilling a few more holes around the neck, right? Right above where the cap is or below, depending on where you're looking at it and what location you are relative to the equator northern of the sun. You're gonna drill a couple holes around there also for water flow so that water can flow through there and evenly distribute throughout the sponge. Look at this little guy. All right, so, and for the 180 sponge, you're not gonna have to drill any holes in the bottle for water flow because the 180 sponge covers your base perfectly and the water flow will be able to go in there nice and beautiful and fantastic. So, assembly of our filter. We're just gonna assume you use the 180 sponge and we're gonna assume that there's K1 in there because I don't want to walk all the way over there. You know what, we will, okay. Let's do it. Let's do it to it, okay. I'm very surprised the mustache has stayed this long. So, as I almost fall down sitting into my child's chair. By the way, yes, this is Hunter's table. I stole my son's table. So, we've got our K1. One cool way to do, to get the K1 into your bottle, because it can be uh, slightly difficult and impossible. Sorry if the camera work is terrible. I'm, I'm not really that sorry. Is to take your XY sponge, do that with it, knock it over, you gotta knock it over first. Fit that on top of your two liter bottle. Take another pop bottle, could be a two liter, could be whatever. Just has to have the same size neck hole region, whatever, neck hole. Then you take that and what you've just created is the world's greatest DIY funnel. So then you take your KY or K1, I can't, I don't know why the heck I just said Freudian slip. Um, and then boom. And then you do that and make a mess. That's what you, hey, I found the bottle cap. It's in here, check it out. I knew it was in here. Found the bottle cap. Now that we're past the point of that, at least I know where it is, right? Lost it again, okay. So, just imagine the bottle's full and boom, it's full. Sorry, we made a mess. You guys can get over it. Got the bottle with our one liter of K1. Then we're gonna take our lid threaded cap combo, threaded plug, and there's a trick here with this piece, okay? Now, the bond between the bottle lid and the threaded plug is gonna be pretty crappy with the silicone. The, th the uh, bottle cap is plastic. If you don't know how that stuff works, plastic is not very well, uh, doesn't bond very well with silicone. Doesn't bond very low, well with silicone, so that bond right there is not gonna be perfect, but as long as you treat it right, and you give it some love and some care, it's gonna do a great job for you. So, the key is to have your the bottle cap portion to the bottle tightened very tightly. You're gonna take your uh, XY180 sponge here that you crudely threw on the ground because you're an idiot. Um, you're not an idiot, I'm an idiot. And you're gonna take that and you're gonna put that on your base. That goes on the base that's gonna work as a pre-filter, as well as utilize the biological surface area of the actual sponge filtration unit. It's gonna be good. So, that's gonna work as a pre-filter, getting all those uh, fine mechanical filter media things, stuffs, bugs. That's gonna get that out of the water. And so, like I said, this part, the cap to the bottle, tight. You want that tight, you want it firm. The PVC to PVC union, the threaded area, I just burped. You want that to not be tight because, because if that's too tight, the uh, threads on those two will bond a lot better than the bottle to the uh, cap. So one of two things are going to happen. If you tighten the PVC too much, you're going to go to turn off the turn out to unscrew the filter to uh, perform maintenance and um, what's going to happen is either that bond between these two is going to break or the uh, bottle will actually unscrew from the lid. But if you do it correctly and you um, don't over tighten the PVC pieces, the convenience of having these two on there means that all you got to do is you've got to unscrew that piece set your moving bed area aside because moving bed filter media is self-cleaning. You don't have to perform maintenance on it ever. Fantastic. 
and then you take your sponge off and you do whatever with it, throw it in a bucket, throw it down the street, roll it down a hill, whatever you do to clean your sponges, um, do that and then all you got to do is put that back on there, take your bottle, screw biddly doo biddly just like so, screw that back in and your filter is back and are you N N I N G running. So. The only thing necessary for this situation is to take your airline tubing. We'll just pretend I have some right here. You're going to take that and you're going to put it in that hole right there. So that it goes into the bottle. You can kind of see it right up in there. That's what you want it to look like. Hold on, we'll turn this beast of a light off so you guys can see a little bit better. So, that goes up in there. Hook that up to uh, some sort of an air pump. Uh, you can hook it up to a tire that has a slow leak in it and uh, should last you a couple days. Steady airflow. As the tire goes flat, you'll probably lose air pressure over time. So, that's that. That's what that looks like with the 380 sponge. Now, this movement that you're seeing from these filters, um, after about 12 to 24 hours, that's what you're going to see. When you first put it in there, it's not going to do that. It needs to take a second, it needs to fluidize, build a little film of bacteria on the actual K1 media and it also has to kind of aerate so when, as soon as you first do this and you put it in the tank it's going to want to float away it's going to want to do this do that it takes a little bit of time work with it a little bit get all the air bubbles because what happens is the K1 will actually float to the top trap a bunch of air bubbles which will make it a very buoyant filter and uh, over buoyant for the tile that's weighing it down check out that fish by the way and uh, it'll actually try and float but stick it in there, leave it overnight, let it sink, pin it down with a rock or something. That's what I did with all these. I actually pinned it down with some rocks. And But after it goes overnight, after the fluidization has started with the filter, it'll actually stay put, stay sunk, and then all this stuff is going to be clashing together. Now, I'll briefly explain a little bit on what my perception of moving bed filters and why they work. So. The inside of the filters can build up bacteria, or inside of the media, this guy right here, the inside of that little wagon wheel can build up media, or uh, biological crap, bacteria, that's what it is, bacteria, can build up bacteria, and then on the outside, because this, how this filter works is all clashes together, it all runs together, runs around, the outside of it is going to only hold the new, freshest, strongest bacteria on there, and then that sloughs off and then the new bacteria. So the hungriest bacteria will be on the outside and that will continuously be regenerating and sloughing off and crashing together and more will come and more will go. And so that's kind of how that works. That's why it's efficient. Self-cleaning, very cool stuff. But like I said, wait about a day. After about a day, this is what you should be seeing with about a liter of media in there. Um, this one's got a little bit more than a liter. Does not uh, run as much, but you still want that fluidization. The bubbles hitting the media and going up and the water flow created by those bubbles is what causes that and it's just going to cycle around eventually over time it'll turn kind of brown maybe even dark brown black that's good you want that you want it to look all dirty and mucky in there because that dirt and muck is the stuff that filters out that bad crap within your water column so our DIY super filter we're going to end this video now so that we can get this video uploaded so that you guys can learn how to make it because it took way too long Need yourself a two liter bottle, couple PVC pieces, a uh, piece of tile, air pump, and tubing, of course. Need those two things. Need some K1 media. You're going to need some silicone. Total end cost should be right around 10 bucks per, per filter. Um, and if you do a bunch of them, it'll cost a little bit less. I think that's about it. I'm going to take this uh, cough drop that I started and then sat down because my throat is a little hoarse we're going to end this video before 20 minutes all in one take for you guys any questions about this hit me up at my cichlidman09 at gmail uh, email account hit me up there I'll answer any questions about it if you have any questions and uh, that's about it for you guys glad to get this video up for you if you haven't subscribed already hit that subscribe button um, and if you guys are out there making this filter, send me some pictures. I want some pictures. Uh, send it to the cichlidman09 at gmail.com, whatever email account. Because I want to see it. I want to see your guys' take on it. 
the uh, XY sponges aren't a set. You don't have to do it. Um, you can use whatever cap of sponge you want. You don't even necessarily have to use a sponge. Um, that just works really good as a pre-filter, keeping all that stuff out of the moving bed region. And now I'm to the rambling portion of the video, which usually happens at the end when I'm out of ideas to talk about. So, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys learned something from this. Learn how to make the coolest, most badass do-it-yourself filter this side of the Skookumchuck River. It's a river right down the street from me. And uh, say goodnight to Azul. Oh, we're at 20 minutes. We'll see you guys next time. Pretty cool, right? Thumbs up if you like the mustache. Stayed on the entire video. See you guys later.